Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Today we are taking a look at the latest update for Windows accessibility. But today we are taking a look at the latest update for Windows. Uh, this is the spring update for 2020. Now we are gonna be focusing on accessibility for the visually impaired. That's what my channel is geared towards, so that's what I'm gonna talk about. And I'm also only gonna be talking about um, screen enhancements and magnification. We're not gonna go into Windows Narrator because Narrator is a whole beast that would take up an entire video just for itself. <laughs> we will save that for another video. Just know that Narrator has gotten some improvements as well. Okay, without any further delay, let's get into it. Okay, and real quickly before we get started, if anybody's wondering, the version of Windows 10 I'm running is Windows 10 Pro. Version is 2004. The OS build number is 19041.2. Two, six, four. Okay, first let's jump into the ease of access. So I'm going to click my Windows logo, or the start button, bring up my start menu. I'm going to go to settings, and we are looking for ease of access, which is usually towards the bottom, and for me it's right down here, bottom left. Now, if you're new to all of this, you have all of your categories over here on the left, and it is a vertical scrolling list. And then you have the settings for each category on the right here, which is also a vertically scrolling list. If you're setting up your device for the very first time, I recommend checking out my video on how to set up a PC computer for low vision. Uh, it's a little old and some of the settings have changed or maybe they're in different locations, but the information is still going to be good. And one of the first places to start here is in display. First option here is the ability to large enlarge your font. And we've got a little slider here and a sample text displays what is happening in real time for wherever you set it. Now you may be tempted to just crank it all the way up and go with that. But one thing I'll show you is that sometimes certain text can be displayed kind of strangely, uh, kind of wonky, I like to say, when it's fully enlarged. Things get cut off, words get wrapped around. So it may not be ideal to just crank it all the way up. But you can experiment with this. You'll see now that if I right click, get my context menu here, the text is much bigger, much easier to see. So that might be beneficial for you. Now I prefer to have mine down like this because I have a large monitor and so things are automatically uh, bigger and easier to see. So for me down here is perfect. The next section here will allow you to make things bigger on your screen and you've got a drop down list here and percentages uh, it will have a recommended you can try the recommended but you might find one of these other ones looks better so for me there's even a larger percentage than the recommended uh, but once again if you make things too big sometimes there can be issues a common problem is a window will pop up that has an OK or a cancel button down at the bottom. But if you've got everything set too large, then the buttons may be cut off uh, at the bottom of the window and that can cause problems. So just keep that in mind, but play around with these sizes here to find what might work the best for you. Then you've got some other options for changing the size of items. You can adjust the brightness, Next we have a section of toggles here and these are things that can help improve the way you see windows. The first one is turning off animations. You can do this, you can turn off the animations in windows and that might make things easier to see. Next one is show transparencies. I've got that one turned off because it makes it a little easier for me to see windows if they're not semi-transparent. You can also hide the scroll bar which is this guy right here. As you see, when I hover over it, it pops out. When I go off of it, it 
disappears again. If I turn that off, it's always out and easier to find. It's not a big deal for me because I use the scroll wheel on my mouse to scroll. So, And then you can choose to have a desktop background image. I run with just a solid black color because it's super high contrast. I can see my icons a lot better. So it's not a big deal for me, but you can choose to have a picture or not. And then down here at the bottom, you've got related settings that you can play with. So now if we go to the left, we're gonna click on the next one, which is the mouse pointer. So we've got a lot of new customizable options in this section. We've always been able to change the theme of the mouse pointer. There's several different themes you can choose. Just a standard white, a standard black with a white outline. I really prefer this inverted. So whenever I'm on a dark background, it's white. When I go over a white background, it's black. It basically takes the opposite color of whatever it goes over. But now we have the option to choose a bunch of new colors. These are some popular colors that they pre-chose for you, but you can also pick a whatever color under the rainbow you want. So these can be great, very high contrast colors. We also have this new slider for sizes of the mouse pointer. We have the option now to make this thing really big. If I drag to the right, you see how large my pointer is now. And this paired with some of these new colors, this can be very helpful for a lot of people. No more losing your mouse pointer on your desktop. You're always gonna be able to see it. Now this is a little too big for me. I like mine more down around here. It's big, but it's not too big. It's still easy for me to see. And as I said, I like the inverted personally. That's just my personal preference. Next section is for touch screens and you can show visual touch feedback when you touch the screen. You can turn that on or off. And then we have in the related settings down here, additional mouse settings. Next section is text cursor. And this is a brand new section with this latest update. These are similar controls to the mouse pointer, but this is for the text cursor. Now we have the option to customize this and make it easier to see. So you can turn it on or off. You can adjust the size of the indicator here by sliding this slider left or right. We can choose the color that we prefer, whatever color is easier for us to see. Maybe something bright. And then once again, you can choose a custom color, whatever would work best for you. And then you can adjust the size of the blinking text cursor here, large or small. Related settings are mouse pointer settings. So next we'll go to the color filters. And this is a section that's gotten a lot of improvements over the last couple of updates. You can set custom color filters. This is going to be great for anybody with any type of color blindness. They can't see certain colors. Well, they can choose one of these options to adjust the colors on the screen to make them easier for you to see. We'll go ahead and turn it on so you guys can see. So obviously everything gets changed pretty drastically. It's hard for me to see it so bright, but we have some color options here. You can just toggle through these and pick the one that might be better suited for you. And you've got a little color wheel down here that kind of gives you some information as well. But this is pretty great here because they also give you a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut command to toggle on the color filter. It's Windows plus Control plus C and that will toggle on and off whatever color filter you have chosen. So a very common one for a lot of people will be inverted. So if I choose inverted, and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off by toggling there. But if I hit Windows, Control, and C, that instantly toggles it on. Windows, Control, C toggles it off. So no matter where you are, 
on the computer, you're working on something, you're on a website, if you need it inverted to make it easier to see, you can just quickly hit that shortcut. And that's true for any of these color filters. Whatever filter you want, you set it to, that shortcut will automatically turn it on and off. So that's great. I made a video once about a keyboard shortcut for inverting the screen, but that keyboard shortcut, that particular shortcut, only works if the Windows magnifier is running. So a lot of people that don't use Windows magnifier, they weren't able to use that keyboard shortcut. Well, here is a new way to do it, and you don't need to have Windows Magnifier running. This will work all the time. Next, let's jump into High Contrast. And this is basically setting a theme for your device, and then you can customize that theme. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. And it's going to change my theme for me here. It's gonna take a second, because I'm also doing a screen, this screen recording. So now you see we have this high contrast theme running and it gives us a new highlight color. We've got this really vibrant outline around the window. If I bring up a file explorer, now you can really get an idea of this high contrast theme. So we have different themes that we can choose. It's not just this one. Here is high contrast number two. Now we have a blue highlight here. So it changes some of the aspect of it. And then this next section down here is where you can customize this theme. So you can change different elements of the theme to fit your particular uh, needs. For example, if you like everything except about this theme except maybe this blue highlight color, you can change that. And once you make the change, you just click apply. Okay, finally, we're gonna look at magnifier. This is the one that I use the most. My magnifier is always running. You can see it's running right now, even though I'm not using it yet. It's always running in the background. In fact, I have it set to automatically start whenever I turn on the computer, so I don't have to worry about it. But magnifier has gotten some great improvements over the last uh, two years or so, and it's really become a great option for magnification. So you have a couple of Windows key shortcuts for turning on, turning off Windows magnifier. You have shortcuts for zooming in and zooming out. You also have shortcuts for choosing full screen, uh, choosing the lens, or choosing the docked. We'll get to that here in a second. I have also mapped these keyboard shortcuts to the buttons on my mouse. So I can just tap the thumb button to zoom in and tap the thumb button, the other thumb button to zoom out. It's so much easier. I can just use one hand to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, I've got a video showing how to do that. So you can also click these buttons here to zoom in and zoom out. You can adjust the amount of zoom. 100% is what it's set by default. That was a little too much of a jump for me, so I have it set to 50. But you can set it to whatever. If you want 400%, you can do that. So now if I click, goes all the way out, if I click once, zooms into 400 or excuse me 500 percent or you can do it even less this is uh, set to 10 percent so it'll much smaller zoom amounts when you click the button that's a little too slow for me <laughs> i like 50. 50 works for me a couple of options here to toggle on and off start the magnifier after sign in or start the magnifier before sign in for everyone. Smooth edge of images and text. This is one of the new updates that was done a couple years ago. And this was a game changer for Windows magnifier in my opinion. So you see when I zoom in very, very close here, we have nice clean lines on the letters and a nice clean line on my pointer here. But if I turn this off, you see now we have jagged lines and jagged lines on the pointer. And the it's kind of fuzzy too around the edge. It's kind of blurry. So that's what this does. It smooths out those edges and makes everything nice and crisp and clean. 
and just makes everything look so much better. It's easier to read. And here is that keyboard shortcut to invert, invert colors that I made a video about before. Control Alt I. But once again, this only works when magnifier is running. Here is how we can change the magnifier view. I have always just used it full screen. That's what works best for me. But you have other options. Docked means you have a small magnifying window there at the top and wherever the pointer goes that's what's magnified up there and we can grab the bottom of this and make it larger if we want to and that readjusts everything and then we also have lens so this just puts a magnifying glass right over your pointer and wherever your pointer goes that's what is magnified and you can still zoom in within this window and you can adjust the size of it down here. Okay, I'm gonna go back to full screen because it's difficult. <laughs> I can't use it like this personally. I'm just so used to using it full screen. There we go, much better. But once again, you have shortcuts to toggle between all of those. This shortcut right here is fantastic. I use it all the time. Control, Alt, Spacebar. Zooms out real quick and then zooms back in. So this is great. If I'm zoomed in really close here and I want to navigate over to one of my folders, I can just zoom out real quick, go up there to my folder, and then it zooms back in. I think that's a fantastic uh, shortcut and a, an important one to remember. Now we can adjust where the magnifier follows. I've got it set to mouse pointer. I don't know why you would not set this one, so if you turn it off, you can just lose your mouse. Oh, I've lost my mouse pointer. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> so I think that's kind of dangerous. You can lose your mouse pointer. I wouldn't recommend turning that off. Uh, keyboard focus, text cursor, and narrator cursor. This next section is also a new addition. Keep the mouse pointer. Right now I have it set to centered on the screen. So when I move left or right, my mouse pointer stays in the center until I get to the edge there. And the window moves around it. But you can change this to the more traditional way to within the edges of the screen. So now the window only moves when my mouse pointer gets to the edge and I kind of push the screen over or push the screen up or down. So this is more the traditional way to use it, but I tell you, once you try centered, it's hard to go back. And you also have the same adjustments with the text cursor. And then finally, this last section is brand new and I am so excited about this. And this is something that I've been requesting for a long time to be added into uh, Windows Magnifier or Windows Accessibility, and they did, and I'm so excited about it, but this is reading. So this is used for someone like me that I don't use Windows Narrator all the time, but there are some situations where I would like the text read out loud to me. Now we have that functionality within Windows Magnifier. So you can set a keyboard command. You can set it to one of these different options. I have it set to insert because that's an easy button for me to find. And then you have a bunch of commands here. Probably the easiest one is I hold down insert and wherever I tap with my mouse, it will start to read from that point. Use these commands to have magnifier read from your screen. Start, pause, and res. And then I can just tap any button to stop it. So I think that's awesome. Very excited about that. Once again, you have a bunch of different commands here for different reading situations. Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed that video taking a look at the newest updates for Windows accessibility. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but I will do my best to help out. There's also a hotline. Hang on. Yes, 1-800-936-5300, 5900. <laughs>
And that is Microsoft's Disability Answer Desk. So if you have questions, you can call them as well. They are trained to have the answers for you. <laughs> But that's it guys, as always, I appreciate you checking out the video. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button, it helps out the channel. Make sure you're subscribed to The Blind Life and turn on notifications because I post a new video every single week. So definitely check those out. Thanks again guys, I'll see you next time.